Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be finding the fourth root of a complex number. I say the fourth root because there's more than one. How many are there? There should be four, right? So in the complex world a number has four fourth roots. It has two square roots, three cube roots and so on and so forth. So how do you find the fourth root of a complex number? I mean, is there a formula? You wish, right? There probably is. And you know what? In another video, we can talk about coming up with a formula. We can tr try to derive it, which is probably going to be complicated, but it's going to be fun. Anyways, that's a different topic. Now let's go ahead and focus on this. So I'll be presenting at least two methods. And my first method is going to depend on finding the fourth root directly. What I mean by that, it'll become more clear as we uh, proceed. But here's what I want to do. I want to set this equal to a number, a complex number. What's the name of this channel? A plus BI. So let's use that. A plus BI. You can also use X plus YI, but I think it's better to use A plus BI because it's the name of the channel. Now we're going to go ahead and raise both sides to the fourth power, Y, because we want to get rid of the fourth root and find A and B. Obviously, that's the goal. Let's go ahead and put this guy on the left, switch sides, and then use binomial theorem, which is fun, right? A to the fourth power plus, remember the coefficients, 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1. Those are like 4 choose 0, 4 choose 1, 4 choose 2, so on and so forth, like the combinatorial coefficients. So the next coefficient is going to be 4, and then I'm going to multiply by A cube. Notice that the powers of A are going to go down as BI is going to show up, and its powers are going to go up. And then 6, reduce to A and increase the B, and so on and so forth. And notice the symmetry. We have symmetry if you look at the uh, term in the middle and then everything uh, that are the same distance from the center, you'll notice the symmetry, hopefully. And finally, we're going to finish with BI to the fourth. And of course, this is supposed to equal negative 7 plus 24I, which is nice. Because we're going to get a system of equations from here, a beautiful system, a quartic system, okay? Now, let's see what happens. This is a to the fourth, great. This is going to be b squared i squared, but i squared is negative 1, so that's just going to bring a negative here. So it's going to look like negative 6a squared b squared. And then here, i to the fourth is 1, so we're just going to get b to the fourth from there. So that's the real part. I wanted to separate them. And these two are going to be the imaginary parts. Imaginary parts are going to be 4a cubed b, and 4ab cubed. By the way, this is going to be a minus sign because i cubed is negative i, so I got to be careful. That's going to be a minus sign. 4a cubed b minus 4ab cubed. And that's going to be multiplied by i, therefore it's going to be the imaginary part. Set it equal to negative 7 plus 24i. Awesome. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to compare the real parts. This is equal to negative 7. This is the imaginary part. It's supposed to equal 24. Nice, because 24 is divisible by 4, so I can simplify it. Let's go ahead and see what happens. After simplifying this a little bit, I get the following. This is going to be negative 7. And this after division by 4, a cubed b minus ab cubed is going to be positive 6, right? It's positive. Okay, cool. We got a nice system, not only a nice system, but actually the nicest form because this is homogeneous. You know what that means? Homogeneous means I can change the variable. Just assume that A over B is another variable. Make sense? So set or B over A, it doesn't matter. Suppose you set B over A equal to something like, how about T? That's my favorite um, drink, I mean variable these days. So let's go ahead and plug it in. How do you plug it in? This means B equals AT. And obviously, if A is 0, then we don't have a solution. Because A and B have to be real. <laughs> okay, sorry, I had to pause and think about it. But, uh, so A is not um, 0. Good. Okay. And obviously, on the, at the bottom, if A is 0, then 0 equals 6, which is a contradiction. So if you replace B with A T, you're going to get A squared T squared and then a to the fourth, b to the fourth. Let's go and simplify this first, and then we'll do the second one. So here, I can take out a to the fourth, 1 minus 6t squared plus um, 
Okay, wait a minute. I messed up here. Uh, a to the fourth, T to the fourth, not B to the fourth. This should be a T. Okay, here we go. I'm like, what happened? We shouldn't have it. We should never be there. T to the fourth equals negative seven. And in the second equation, this one, if you do the same thing, you're going to get, uh, let's see, let's do the work here so we can write it underneath that. A cubed times A T minus A times A cubed T cubed. And that's going to give us A to the fourth T minus A to the fourth T cubed. So if you take out A to the fourth from the second equation, you're going to get T minus T cubed. And that product is equal to six. Awesome. Now we got a nicer system and we can actually divide these side by side because that's when the a to the fourth cancels out. Great. And then cross multiply like this. You're going to get 6 minus 36 t squared plus 6 t to the fourth equals negative 7 t plus 7 t cubed. Put everything on the same side. 6 t to the fourth minus 7 t cubed minus 36 t squared plus 7 t not 70, 7 t, and then plus 6 equals 0. Well, this looks like a symmetrical equation. Beautiful, beautiful. What we can do is actually divide everything by t squared and then use an awesome transformation or just some type of substitution. If you divide everything by t squared, which is, by the way, the term in the middle or the variable in the middle, you're going to get 6 t squared minus 7 t minus 36 plus 7 over t plus 6 over t squared equals 0. And then put these two together, 6t squared. And I could even write it like this. And then I could write it like this. And like that. Awesome. Now we're going to do a little bit of focus focus. This is t minus 1 over t squared plus 2. Because there's going to be a 2 that's coming up in the middle minus 2t times 1 over t, and then you just have to add 2 to it to make it sum of 2 squares. And now here comes the beautiful substitution. Now we can go ahead and call this something. How about, I don't know, u maybe? <laughs> okay, and let's call that u. 6 times u squared plus 2 minus 7u minus 36 equals 0, and this just becomes quadratic. Beautiful. 6u squared minus 7u plus 12 minus 26 that's going to be a minus 24 equals 0 and i'm hoping to get something nice from here hopefully right u is going to be negative b 7 plus minus the square root of b squared 49 minus 4ac that's going to be a plus sign plus 4 times 6 times 24 uh-oh 24 times 24 is just going to be 576 if i add 49 please come up with a nice number 625 yay that's 25 squared, beautiful. And this is going to be 6 times 2, which is 12. So I'm going to be getting 7 plus minus 25 over 12. And that's going to be 32 over 12 or negative 18 over 12. And this is going to be divided by 4, 8 over 3, divided by 6, negative 3 over 2. These are the u values, remember, and u is t minus 1 over t. Now you're going to set these equal to t minus 1 over t. And then you're going to solve for t, but that's not the end of it because then you have to back substitute. What is t? t is b over a. That's going to give you b over a. And then you can plug this in once you know the value of t into one of these equations. That's going to give you the a and the b and so on and so forth. But that's going to be very painful, don't you think? Anyways, let's quickly talk about the second method because I don't want to make this video too long because people don't like long videos. So let's talk about the the second method real quick. The second method is actually probably much shorter because it kind of uses this idea. Instead of uh, finding the fourth root directly, which is hard, right, kind of, and imagine you're coming up with a formula like this, uh, we can take the square root and then take the square root again, right? But wait a minute, does this work with complex numbers? Absolutely, because a complex number has two square roots. Each of those is going to have two square roots, then you're going to have four roots. So it's good. But let's just find one of them. For example, how do you find the square root of negative 7 plus 24i? You can set it equal to c plus di. I don't want to use the a plus bi again. Right? Sorry about that. a plus bi. But uh, square both sides. And you're going to get something like this. And then from here, it'll get a system of equations. What? c squared minus d squared is negative 7. And cd is 12. Now, you could probably guess and check. It's easy. Don't try to solve it. I mean, you can if you want. But I would just guess 1 and 12 won't work. 3 and 4 maybe. Uh, 16. 
but you got to choose carefully because 3 is less than 4. So C must be 3, right? Because their difference is negative. So now this gives me 3 plus 4i as one of the square roots. Great. Because now I can try the square root 3 plus 4i, which shouldn't be too hard. But this is one of the square roots. And if one of them is 3 plus 4i, the other one is just going to be the opposite. And now you have to square root these. And guess what? You're going to get four solutions. Why? Because each of these has two square roots. That's going to give you all the solutions. And that's left as an exercise for you. Keep practicing. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.